so that's the assassination of Julius Caesar. We have an air of um, uncertainty hanging over events. But one person in particular is standing forward at this moment. One person in particular has been launched to the front of Roman politics by the assassination of Julius Caesar, and that man is Mark Antony. Mark Antony obviously is someone that we know best from um, Shakespeare, um, the lover of Cleopatra, the man who fell um, so in love with Eastern decadence that he forgot um, what it was to be Roman and had to be defeated by Octavian, the, late, the future um, Augustus, who brought Rome back um, um, from the brink and restored um, the empire. Now, unsurprisingly, that's not a very fair picture of Mark Antony, and it's certainly not one that Mark Antony himself would have recognised. But it's important to note that um, part of that picture of Mark Antony, Mark Antony the decadent villain, is a picture that is established by Cicero in this very speech. And one of the things that is of crucial importance when looking at the second Philippic is trying to understand who the actual man Mark Antony was, as opposed to the villain that Cicero presents for us, um, presents for us here. So who was Mark Antony and why was he um, an appropriate figure for attack um, um, on the 19th of September in the second Philippic? Well, Mark Antony comes from a famous Roman family. His grandfather was one of Cicero's teachers of oratory. He was widely renowned as one of the greatest teachers of, um, of, of rhetoric, one of the greatest practitioners of rhetoric um, in the years around sort of 100 or 90 um, BC in Cicero's um, um, youth. Mark Antony's father, on the other hand, is a character we know relatively little um, about, um, and largely the disreputable picture that we have is one that is created by Cicero bespoke for this um, particular instance. Invective. Um, but suffice it to say, there is no um, immediate passage of glory from Mark Antony, the grandfather, um, down to um, his son. His grandson, however, set about restoring the family name by allying himself closely with Julius Caesar. Now, this is hardly an unusual step for a young Roman of the 50s um, BC um, to take. When Julius Caesar had um, ended his consulship with um, the decision to enter Gaul and to try to finally uh, avenge the burning of Rome several hundred years before uh, by the Gallic tribes and to finally bring this large area of the empire back under Roman sway, or rather under Roman sway for the first time, um, a huge number of ambitious young men, not least Cicero's own younger brother Quintus, um, set out to act as lieutenants in Julius Caesar's campaigns in order order to try to achieve the requisite glory to help push them up the political um, um, ladder. We're all familiar, I think, with the idea that Julius Caesar sent a large number of commentaries back from um, from his wars in Gaul. Every year the Roman people were sent um, a, uh, what would we say, a modern 60-page uh, summary of that season's campaigning. And while a lot of that emphasises the brilliance of Julius Caesar's um, military campaigning, a very large part of these texts are made up with praising the exploits of his um, of his young generals, of the young lieutenants who he's left in charge when he's off doing important things um, elsewhere. Now, Mark Antony is um, one of the greatest of these um, lieutenants. Mark Antony is someone who Caesar was able to entrust with large commands, um, who could entrust large parts of Gaul to look after while Julius Caesar was, say, going out invading that cold, wintry island of Britain. Mark Antony could be trusted to look after the troops. Now, every few years when, it, uh, when um, a young man's age made him eligible to come to Rome and stand for election, Julius Caesar would support these people and Mark Antony um, every year was sent to Rome with a troop of um, citizen veterans who would vote him into his year of office, at which point he would discharge his uh, duties as such, promote Julius Caesar's um, brilliance, and then afterwards return um, back um, um, to Gaul to continue um, campaigning. As I say, this is a very natural um, way of making your name. And while Mark Antony was particularly brilliant, he doesn't necessarily stand out um, for this uh, particular choice of career. A large number of people in the Senate, a large number of people listening to this speech will have followed exactly the same, um, exactly the same career route um, as young Mark Antony. So why is Mark Antony so important? Why is Mark Antony the one person who has a speech delivered um, against them of this style? It's certainly not the case that Cicero delivered Philippics against all of Julius Caesar's former lieutenants in the wake of, uh, of the assassination. Why was Mark Antony picked out for that choice? 
Well, part of it is coincidence. Um, it's important to remember the reason why Mark Antony is important in 44 BC is that he was co-consul with Julius Caesar in that year. Now, Rome has two consuls um, every year who are meant to hold office for that entire 12-month um, period. <laughs> And in March, Julius Caesar and Antony have been have, have held office for what three three of those months, a quarter of the year, um, when Julius Caesar is is struck down, leaving Mark Antony as the only person holding the highest office um, in the state. So, to a certain extent, this is coincidence. Um, Mark Antony um, is one of a series of lieutenants who were given the honour of holding the consulship alongside Julius Caesar, um, but it feels a little bit um, like. Um, being in the, the front of a 442 with Cristiano Ronaldo, right? You don't expect to do very much because the other person's Julius Caesar, the other person's Cristiano Ronaldo, they're going to score the goals. Your job is to stand there looking nice um, beside them. To a certain extent, that's what Mark Antony could have expected of 44 BC. And the assassination, which shocked everyone, threw him suddenly into the limelight as the only person holding um, executive power um, in, in the Roman state. And this is what makes him um, a target for abuse from Cicero.